In this video, I'm going to tell you how to paint up miniatures for role-playing games. This post is meant for beginners, but you are more than welcome to also watch if you are at a more advanced level. My name is Jay, and you're watching Must Contain Minis. I do reviews and showcases of miniatures and miniature-related products. My goal is to share with you options out there that are not necessarily made by the biggest company on the market. In this video, I'm painting up a figure by Westphalia Miniatures. This company makes a wide variety of miniatures aimed at the role-playing game market. If you're looking for options for your role-playing game outside of what WizKids and Reaver make, this is a really neat company to take a look at. They even have fantasy miniatures in the likeness of Darth Vader, Stormtroopers, and even the Tiger King, among many other really unique figures. There will be a link in the description below if you want to check out their website. While my focus today is on my paint style, I will give you some notes from the review of the product too. Specifically at the end of the video, you will find a scale comparison image to show you how Westphalia miniatures measure up to other brands. The images you are seeing now are all from my review of the small shipment of miniatures that, that Westphalia sent to me for review. They sent me these before I started this YouTube channel. This video is actually a narrated adaptation of two written posts that I wrote on Must Contain Minis, the website. There are links in the description below if you want to check out those posts. If I get enough likes on this video, I will do up some YouTube posts with actual video footage of me going through my painting process with you. That said, I'm going to go deep into details about my entire process to painting miniatures. Don't get nervous though, this video is still aimed at beginners. To help you navigate, I've made a table of contents in the description below that will allow you to jump around the video quickly. My general approach to painting miniatures is 5 steps long. This procedure produces great results no matter your skill level. These steps are number 1. Clean and prime your miniature. Number 2. Lay down your base layer. Number 3. Apply shades or washes. Number 4. Highlight your miniature. And number 5. Glue on basing materials. I find the steps above a great way to paint really good looking miniatures for the tabletop without having to spend too much time and making them look perfect. Remember, most people are going to be looking at your miniatures from a distance of their chair to the tabletop. I'm going to call that a tabletop distance. We don't have to paint the miniatures flawlessly for them to appear decent from that distance. Now let's talk about step one, clean and prime your miniatures. The first question is, do you have to wash your miniatures? I side with yes for all figures unless they come pre-primed. We have a chart about that here. The reason that you want to wash your miniatures is because companies use release agents on their miniatures to get them out of the molds. These release agents sometimes make it so that the paint won't adhere. If you ever try to paint your miniatures and you see the paint sliding right off of them, that could be part of the problem. If you work with pre-primed miniatures, like Dungeons & Dragons figures from WizKids, then you do not have to wash or prime them. They come pre-primed. Today I'm working with a resin figure, so this miniature needs to be washed. To clean them, just put them in some warm soapy water and gently wash them. I often use a sponge to gently scrub the residue away, but using a toothbrush is even better. I then rinse them off after I scrub them with warm water. Next up, I clean off any mold lines or unsightly blemishes on the miniature. After that, I prime them. Specialized Miniature Primer is likely the best thing to use for this as it is easy and fear-free. But I apply just Citadel Abandoned Black paint and brush it on. Citadel Abandoned Black paint can act as a primer if you don't have anything sitting around. That paint is made by Games Workshop. The Army Painter and Vallejo also have great options, but if you don't have any of that around, Gesso from the Craft Store will also work. Now that we have cleaned and primed our miniature, we are ready for step two, laying down our base layer. In this step, all that you are doing is painting your entire miniature in the colors that you want the figure to be. Don't worry about neatness here. I just slop the paint on in thin coats during this step. Thick coats obscure the details. If I hit the wrong area or the color is not covering up enough primer, I can paint over it. It is easiest to paint your bottom layers first and work your way up to the more raised areas. 
Take your time and get the figure painted up using the color scheme that you want. You can use whatever paints you have. I started using acrylic paints from the craft store when I first started in the hobby. As I painted, I grew to appreciate the more expensive hobby store paints. The reason for this is because the specialized paints work better on miniatures. You can use whatever brands you have access to. For this miniature, I use paints from three different companies. At this point, I'm pretty happy with my miniature. Some people stop here, and that is totally okay. That said, a miniature is too small for us to interpret shadows that would naturally be in the crevices of the figure if the figure were real life. As such, there is a quick and easy way to build up depth of color on our miniature. This way is through a process called shading and highlighting, which brings us to step three, shading your miniature. You may ask why I have shade and wash your miniature on this slide. Some companies make a different product called washes. I'm not referring to washing it like we did in step one of clean your miniatures. Washes can actually be used in pretty much the same way as I'm going to be using this shading product by Games Workshop. As a tip, washes and shades can be messy to work with. If you're going through this step, make sure you protect your work area. You can do that with plastic or newspaper or, well, I personally use plastic and I also like to have a holder so that my paints don't tip over. Well, paints, I'm talking about the shade here. My paints generally don't knock over, but I, I've had the shade knock over and it is a mess. We don't want that. So if you can get yourself a holder for this or if you go online and then you have a 3D printer, you can get free STL files. I would recommend that you print out or buy a holder for your Nolan oil or whatever you're going to use. This Nolan oil that I'm using here comes from Games Workshop. It is going to go into the recesses of the miniature and make them look darker. This creates the illusion of shadows on your figure. At this stage, sometimes the miniature looks better than before and sometimes it looks worse. If it looks worse, don't worry. Our next step will fix any issues there are and make the miniature look better again. If you are happy with the way the miniature looks at this point, there is nothing wrong with stopping here. We did that in my tutorial of how to paint Space Marines, link in the top right. While my Space Marines look better after the shading process, my female barbarian here does not. She actually looks worse, in my opinion. So I'm going to take her to the next step. Step 4 is highlighting your miniature. And when you combine shading and highlighting together, you get a really appealing visual effect on your figure. This is where things really come together. Using the exact same colors as I did for my base layer, I go over the miniature again. This time, I do only the raised areas of the miniature rather than everything that I did during the base layer step. I do this by picking at specific areas with my brush, or I use a technique called dry brushing. Between these two methods, I paint the miniature to a much better standard. For the first technique, I just brush the paint onto specific areas of the miniature to brighten the color in that location. This includes parts of the clothes, the top of the sword, and the forward areas of the leg, and so on. The idea is that I would just want to add more color, or a brighter color, to the areas where the light would naturally be hitting it if it were a life-sized life object. Next, I use a technique called dry brushing. If this video gets enough likes, I will do a tutorial of a different mini where I film the dry brushing process. If you're not familiar with dry brushing, what you are going to do is you're going to take the paint from the pot and you're going to wipe it off on a paper towel. You want to wipe it until you see just a little bit of pigment coming off your brush. Once you get to just a tiny bit of pigment, basically a dusting, you brush that on your miniature and the raised areas are going to capture that color and it will be applied to just the raised areas of your miniature. It makes a really nice effect. By doing base layering, shading, and highlighting, you add a lot of depth in the colors on your miniature using a minimal number of paints. For those wondering, here's a chart of the colors I use for this miniature. This list is also on my website. If you don't have this number of paints, that is okay. Often using just three colors and a shade can get you really fantastic results. To do the eyes, I used a ballpoint pen and then painted over any pen overflow with a flesh color. When I first started painting, I would do a dab of white and then black in the middle to do an eye. I found that gave many of my miniatures a googly-eyed appearance. To avoid this, I learned to apply shade and then not bother painting the eyes at all. 
From a tabletop distance, you really don't notice the eyes of the miniature. In fact, the eyes often look good enough when you don't do them and you just apply the shading and highlighting techniques that I showed you here. But that ballpoint pen tip that I gave you, it really works well for me. Now let's proceed to the final part of completing this miniature. The next step is to glue on the basing materials. I'm happy with a natural look of using just natural materials from the hobby store on my bases. To do this, I cover my base in white glue, which is also known as PVA glue, and then either place the materials on the base or dip the base of the miniature into a tub of green flock or whatever material I'm working with. The end result looks fantastic for just under a minute's worth of work. In fact, it really adds to the polished look of the miniature. Now to recap, the steps that I follow in painting a miniature are Step 1. Clean and prime your miniature Step 2. Lay down your base layer Step 3. Apply shades or washes Step 4. Highlight your miniature Step 5. Glue on basing materials I encourage you to paint how you are most comfortable. If you are happy following the process to just step number two and apply a base layer, that is fine. If you follow the procedure further, you can get some really nice results on your miniatures, even when working at a beginner's level. With the tutorial part of this video over, let's take a look at the scale comparison image that I mentioned earlier. To make it easier to follow along, I numbered the miniatures on the slide. I don't have any Games Workshop miniatures in the lineup because I like to introduce people to brands that they might not otherwise have known about. Going left to right, we have Number 1, a 28mm Necromancer Apprentice for Frostgrave by North Star Military Figures. Number 2, a Dungeons & Dragons miniature by WizKids. Number 3, a Feline Bard character miniature by Westphalia Miniatures. Number 4, an Undead Town Folk by Fireforge Games. Number 5, a Vampire Lore by Westphalia Miniatures. Number 6, an Undead Mantic Games Zombie. Number 7, a 32mm Reaper Miniatures Cultus. Number 8, the Female Barbarian that I painted in this video. This miniature is by Westphalia Miniatures. And finally, number 9 is a 32mm Reaper miniature. There you have it. You now know how I paint my miniatures. Hopefully this tutorial helps you get good results with your own miniatures for role-playing games and miniature skirmish games too. Until next time, happy gaming everyone!